Welcome back to the casting couch here on the Law of Well. Now, the next man I've got coming up, who we're going to have a quick chat with, I'm going to use a few words to describe him. First of all, we'll call him uh, an author. We'll call him a journalist. We'll call him a photographer. We'll call him a DVD producer. We'll call him an environmentalist. And I'm even going to call him a fisherman. He's probably a few more things, but welcome to the catch, El McGlashan. Yeah, I was thinking Stud Muffin had to go in there. That's what I thought we could Mate, do. when we're sitting on a white couch, if I sit side on, neither <laughs> of us are a bloody Stud Muffin. Let me give you the tip. When are we just muffins? <laughs> <laughs> Muffin tops. Yeah. yeah, so welcome to the catch, mate. What have you been up to? Mate, doing the show, which, it sucks. I want to go fishing. It's oh. dead calm back at home. They get photos of swordfish down in Tassie. They've got yellowfin up at JB. And it's even calm here in Melbourne <sighs> for a change. Imagine being out do- outdoors now. You've got to do it though, it's part of the job. So. Okay, now look, fishing's uh, been a big part of your life for a long time, but more recently, it's become a little bit more political and there's been a little bit more of the environmentalist part coming. Can you tell us a bit about your Pelagic Foundation? Yeah, look, what I wanted to do is, I want to put something back in, because like, I basically live to go fishing, right? That's Many of us do, yeah. It, it's yeah. an obsession, Absolutely. it drives the rest of the family crazy. <laughs> but what I've tried to do is put something back in. So what we're doing, Pelagic Foundation was basically to get the researchers and the, the, the recreational anglers working together a lot more. Yeah, the problem we've had, and it's it's a real issue, is that they're, you know, the commercial fishing's dropping down, but that's what's funding all the research. Yep. So now there's this gap. So yep. what we're trying to do is get it where we're working with the researchers and, and helping to steer the, the science, I suppose you could say, yep. in a better direction. Because the big problem we get, and this is a real issue I see, is that with the research, is that it's not being utilised in a lot of the time, and or it's not being steered in the right direction, or they're trying to lock it up with a marine park without even researching yep, yep. it. And if you don't understand what you're protecting, you can't protect it. If you Absolutely. don't understand it, you don't appreciate it. If you don't appreciate it, you can't protect it. It's pretty straightforward. And if not you, who? If not now, when? So That's it. It had to sort of be looked at, didn't it, pretty quick. So uh, you've been doing this for how many... No, not everything. Your, your series, you do a show now on... Uh, we're going to seven now, so seven. we did ten. Yep. So we did big fish, small boats. We were originally with Strike Zone, obviously Strike Zone TV. Yep. Then we went to big fish, small boats. And the, the Strike Zone TV came from the uh, original DVDs. Strike Zone, Strike Zone DVDs, yep. Which was kind of cool because back in those early days when there was no YouTube or anything, I teamed up with Ron Croft and said, "Let's do it." And he was a cameraman, and I said, "Let's put something together. Let's film." And he goes, "What do we need to do?" And I said, it "Needs to be Blue Planet. We need to film the bite." He goes, "How do you do that?" And I went, "Got to get a camera that we tow." So he went and built one. Went, Let's go yep. and try it. I still remember this day. We tied along. We tied a, a yakker to the back of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just swim along. And this kingy just comes and goes bang. And we look at it. Mind you, it was upside down, I might add. But anyway, we're looking at it going. You can fix oh, that. With, you can fix that's that the stuff. Yep. Yeah, and then we did that. Obviously, went up to big fish, small boats, which we, we instead, like a lot of the shows, they do the same thing and keep going. We like to start again and rebrand so yep, that yep. it's change a bit, so you refresh it. So we did that for three seasons. Now we're into. We're coming to Fishing with Mates, which is on seven, coming on seven, made in Excellent. October, I think it is. Yep. So, yeah, no, it'll be exciting. And it, it's changing a bit too, and because that's what you do, you go fishing with mates. Although, I got told by legal the other day that some of the jokes that we do aren't allowed to be uh, used. Uh, uh, well, you can use them on this sort of show, mate. We're yes. just on the internet, so don't Yeah, that's worry. all right. We're not going to worry about big broadcasters. Now, uh, going back to the start, I mentioned that you're an author. Now, a lot of people might not realise I've written a few books. Yeah, I've done several now. I've You're on done the third edition of your complete fishing body of the clip. Yeah, Bible the complete or? fishing Bibles. Yeah, it's third or fourth, I think it is. Fourth I'm not sure. Now. Third. I think it's third. I'm not sure now. Now you've got me thinking we'll just about it. Up the fourth. Go out and buy it. Bring him up to the fourth yeah, yeah. edition. Yeah. We're gonna need a fourth edition now. <laughs> so we've done that. We've done yeah, I've done several books over the years. I even did one on hunting as well and the, the outdoors and everything. And yeah, and these days it's sort of the TV takes up a lot more, but Obviously the magazines are still big and the Daily Telegraph's a huge one for yep, us yep. every Friday. So, so it's, it's full time, you know, non-stop doing it, but it's, you gotta love it. So that's the Elmer Glashan now. Let's go back to a long, long time ago. If you can still remember, you're not that old, you're the same age as me, yeah, so it can't be too bad. Look. Now, who first sort of got you into fishing? What was your main influence or what was your main- uh, Old man. The old man? Yeah, like so many, you know, you think that it's friends and stuff. No, it's always, yeah, your dad, your granddad, your nan, it's always someone, or an uncle or something mad yep. keen. I, I pretty much fished since I was a kid, I pretty much fished and hunted pretty much every weekend. And it was just natural. It's funny, my brother, he went in, became a fisheries officer, and now he's doing the game yep. management, doing all the, the deer hunting and stuff. Yep. And I did it, and I wanted a job where I never worked a day in my life. That was my theory. 
<laughs> I'm now working my you. ass off, you know, it's just bloody hell. Yeah, it, was, yeah, yeah. it was all great in theory, but when it came to it, I bloody I work hard, but it's been the most awesome sort of ride. And you know, you say in the early days, man, everyone goes, how did you do it? It's all driven on passion. Because there's one yeah. month there, I earned $30. 30 bucks for the whole month. I don't know the feeling. <laughs> but you don't stop, you just keep going. Now it's pretty lucrative these days. It's yeah. you know, a pretty awesome business and go you know, off overseas again to film there. And we're, you, you just know, come back from overseas, haven't you? Papua New Guinea last Yeah. Spot. How's this? My How's job? Going, mate? Yeah, it's... <laughs> I taped Coming it back, back on. We'll have to show the photo there. I'll give you the photo Absolutely. to put up on that. Yep, yep. We taped it back over after cutting off. If there's one thing I can tell you, it's wear gloves when fishing. And not the cut-off ones like I was no, wearing. Especially yeah. if you're going to use braid and cast really big lures at oh. really big fish. And you can see it when I cast, ah, oh, it went like that, went, ooh, the end of my finger's missing. So we got it and taped it back over with gaffer tape. As you do. Yeah, and fixed it. It was perfect. So no, the fish was <laughs> awesome. Like, how's this for the ultimate dream job? They rang up and said, Al, we want you to come over because we're fishing untouched waters. What we need you to fish is just, well, pretty much fish. And as soon as we find the fish move, so we know that there's fish there. So every time we catch fish, uh, you know, coral trout like that, and then yeah, we had yeah. insane dog tooth fishing. The only thing that was a bit disappointing was the GTs were a bit slow. Like, yeah, they right. weren't really, they were right, they weren't going off or anything, so. But they, look, GTs can be like that anywhere in the world. They can be there one day and not the next, so. I kind of think they're like females, they don't know what they want. I'll leave that alone. My wife knows what she wants. <laughs> I'll find out about it all the time. Yeah, you keep being told. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we married the same person. <laughs> now, look, that all started for you. You actually come from Melbourne. You're not in Melbourne now. You're in Sydney. But yep. you sort of started down here, didn't you, as a young well, bloke? Yeah, I did it sort of. You know, I went to Scotch College down here and used to fish, cut my teeth fishing in Gardner's Creek in the Yarra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, Port Phillip Bay. And the funny thing is that I went to Sydney because the fishing was so hard down here so I could get more game fish. I left. Now your snapper fishing is awesome. Now your bluefin tuna fishing is awesome. Now you've got kingy fish and your well, shark fishing is awesome. Too, yeah, now, the sorties are going as well. <laughs> so I don't think I'm ever going to be welcome back. Uh, I'll leave and the fishing no. gets better. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you can't be a Mexican and then come back down to Mexico. No, I can't yet. go back, can I? It's a, it's a one-way trip. <laughs> so look, when you started when you were young, like, it was predominantly your dad that sort of got you into it? or you, you, Always, your yeah. No, the old man, mum hated it, couldn't yeah. understand what the deal was. And we'd be hunting and fishing every weekend and so it was just... mum and dad or nan and pop or someone was giving you some pocket money every week. Can you remember what the first bit of fishing tackle, the first real bit of tackle you bought oh God. on your own was? I reckon, I can't remember what I bought, but I remember getting it for Christmas, yeah. a rod and reel, and going out and catching my first, well not my first, but my first decent snapper. Mm -hmm. Like two days later, and that was just like pie in the sky. That's it. Yeah, you only cruise it straight after you get it. Of course. It was now, insane. We all learn different things as we travel through our journey in fishing. You would have probably learned a basic, like a half hitch as an, your first sort of knot or a granny knot, and then you would have moved on to something a bit more advanced as time goes past. What's the most common knot you use now and why? Uni knot. Uni knot. And you know what? It's a simple knot. There's all these complex and fancy knots out there and stuff. The uni knot is really simple. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, don't quote me on I'd say 95% breaking, like something like that. It's a good knot and it holds yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, the knot works. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and it's the thing is it's really simple and it works. And what a lot of people do with fishing is they make it too complex, that they get it too, you know. Guilty as charged. It does, know, and it's actually do it. simplified. Make it simple yeah. and that's what it should be. Cool, so what can we expect to start seeing now from Elmer Glacian in the future? Have you got any more books coming or have you given that yeah, up? I know your wife's got into it. Yeah, she went into a cookbook as well. I haven't done a book for a while. It's sort of, the internet sort of crushed the market a little bit now, unfortunately, yep, yep. and stuff. So we're building on, we've just taken on someone for a full time for our social media and all that. So, because I'm such a spaz at it, I keep <laughs> stuffing up. Look, it's not just that. We all get stuck behind these ridiculous oh, computers and stop fishing. It takes your life. I'll tell you what I saw the other day, it's really good down here. Is that thing that Verfish and the, all the, the guys are doing about the million fish shows or the government are doing down yeah, here? The, the, the get the kids government. off computers and get them fishing. I reckon that should be national. I well, reckon that's I've, brilliant. Honestly, I've just written an article myself in a magazine for Verfish about education for our kids. And, you know, we've got a lot of great programs here that sort of start, kids go off and have a great time at a clinic, and then there's nothing. You know, and, and I sort it, of yeah. look at the examples we've got from overseas and different places, and the education starts when they're two and goes through to the time when they're adults. And it's they uh, need it. keeps everybody interested. The one uh, target one million policy that the state government in Victoria has come up with is going to do some great things for fishing. I think it's great because I was up there on the Yamaha stand before, and all the kids always coming up, 
and they all want to go fishing. Now, as parents, most parents are too busy. Yep. I mean, my kids are blessed and they don't realise how easy they've got it. <laughs> like last weekend, we were up hunting because my younger one, Cooper, who's only eight, it's already shot his first pig on the boat. Like, we eat everything. So it's, it's all that sustainable hunting, you know, that you eat your own food. And, and same with fish. Yep. Anyway, the older one hasn't got one yet. So they're out spending the whole week on these awesome properties. Then the next day we're out fishing, and I'm sitting there going, you kids don't realise what you're getting, you know? You're just, oh, yeah, you know, it wasn't that good. We only saw a few kingies today. I'm like... <laughs> If so, the average people, we don't see, half of the people yeah. don't see kingies their whole life until they start targeting them, but well, only we had, a few kingies. Well, how's this for classic? So we're there, we had some friends over from England, and anyway, the lady, one of the ladies is there going, oh, I'd love to see a whale, they're amazing creatures, you know, and, and Cooper, the younger one, pipes up and goes, whales, they're a bloody nuisance. They so as you go, right. Yeah, they drive and they get up in front of you and you're trying to drive along and they get, they like speed ums and damn things. <laughs> just go out the front they're everywhere and she's looking at this little kid with contempt going I've never seen a whale I'd love to see and he goes just stand on the headland the damn things are going past all the time and I go mate not everyone has it the way you have it you know you get to get it as a daily thing so so yeah I think that we've got to get them all out there all those kids out there doing it absolutely the more kids the better so oh, look thanks for joining me on the casting couch I really appreciate you coming and stopping by and having a yak and uh, we hope to see a lot more of you in the future absolutely thank you mate